Well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome here to the launch pad. You're looking at a live view of Slick 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida, where SpaceX is going for their second launch from the Space Coast today. T minus two minutes, 30 seconds, and counting to launch of a Falcon 9 rocket from the under construction Slick 40, where they are currently building that new crew access tower to be able to start supporting cargo and crew missions from Slick 40 so they can start and further development of their Starship pad on Launch Complex 39A. If you haven't yet, take a moment, engage that like button, share out the stream, invite people to join us. We're listening in for those final calls from Mission Control for Startup and Go for Launch. Strongback retract started a couple of minutes ago. As you can see, that Strongback has retracted away from the side of the rocket in preparation for today's flight. As SpaceX continues to do so with their new Thank model of cover... Wait, wait covering Starlink launches. They will not be providing any commentary, but we'll be running you through the milestones from launch through touchdown of the booster, uh, but they will not be following through with payload deployment. Payload deployment set to occur one hour, five minutes, six seconds into today's flight. Ground gas goes out to start. T minus 90 seconds. As always here at the launch pad in those final minutes of the count, let's see that go now go in the chat. Falcon, I didn't start up. LD, go for launch. Fifteen seconds. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, ignition, engines full power and lift off of Starlink. Go Starlink, go Falcon. Vehicle's pitching down range. T plus 30 seconds into flight. The next major milestone will be Mika, uh, sorry, Max Q. That's set to happen one minute, 12 seconds into flight. That's when the booster will be going through its maximum aerodynamic pressure or mechanical stress on the first stage. Following Power that, we will go through a sequence of events of Miko stage separation and MVAC ignition. But we're about 20 seconds away from that call out of Max Q. Vehicle supersonic. Max Q. plus one minute 20 seconds into flight you heard there the call out for max q that's the maximum dynamic force on the booster falcon 9 will now throttle up heading up to a sequence of events starting with miko that's set to happen two minutes 25 seconds into flight just under a minute from now immediately followed by stage separation and ignition of that mvac engine or the second engine also known as scs1 30 seconds later, we will have fairing deployment, exposing the 22 Starlink satellites to uh, the vacuum of space for the first time. You can see the beautiful curvature of the Earth and sunset coming up on the Space Coast for tonight's evening launch. Coming up to two minutes into flight, now 37 kilometers in altitude, traveling over 5,000 kilometers an hour. Waiting for the call out of Miko and stage separation. Go. 
Stage separation confirmed. Coming back ignition. You can see that MVAC ignition has been confirmed on the right side of your screen. A live look at that MVAC engine. On the left side, the grid fin's now deploying on the first stage as it continues to coast up to its apogee. Apogee should occur around 116 kilometers in altitude uh, a couple minutes from now. Waiting for the call out of fairing separation. Fairing separation confirmed. And those 22 Starlink satellites are now exposed to the vacuum of space. The first stage, having completed its 14th flight after previously supporting CRS-22, Crew-3, Turkisat-5B, Crew-4, CRS-25, Utilsat, Hopper 13G, Empower-A, PSN Satiria, and five other Starlink missions. It's hosting up to its apogee before it heads back down to Earth, where it's targeting a landing on a short fall of Gravitas, SpaceX's drone ship stationed about six, 700 kilometers downrange in the Atlantic Ocean. The next major milestone that we'll be looking for is that first stage entry burn that's set to begin six minutes, eight seconds into flight. But keep an eye on that altitude and speed on the bottom left corner as the first stage approaches its apogee here. When you see that speed starting to increase, that means that it is beginning its journey back down to Earth. You're seeing some ice coming off of the engines there from the first stage. And there you can see the speed fluctuating and starting to increase. That means first stage has reached apogee 116 both vehicles are on nominal trajectory. You heard the call out there, both vehicles continuing on their planned trajectory. Now four minutes, 35 seconds into flight. First stage coming back down towards shortfall of Gravitas. Second stage now traveling almost 11,000 kilometers an hour at 146 kilometers in altitude. Payload deployment again set to occur one hour, five minutes, six seconds into today's flight. SpaceX won't be providing live coverage of that, but they will be confirming it via social media, or should I say only on X, but they will be confirming that in about an hour's time from now. Acquisition of signal, bring you. That is the handover of the data link for the second stage to the Bermuda ground stations. So the second stage continues about a minute away from that entry burn beginning. As we watch the altitude descend, the first stage now passing back through the Kármán line, now under 100 kilometers in altitude, beginning to prepare for its entry burn. Those engines preparing their engine chill for reignition. Stage 1 FTS has saved. Stage 1 entry burn startup. And you heard and saw that call. The first stage has ignited a few of its uh, Rutherford, sorry, not Rutherford, Merlin engines as it conducts its about 25 second entry burn. This creates basically a force shield protecting the engines and the boosters as they re enter through the Earth's atmosphere, killing off a couple thousand kilometers an hour in speed, now descending through 46 kilometers. Stage 1 altitude. has saved. And there's that landing burn. Stage one entry burn shut down. Next major milestone will be landing burn. That's set to occur eight minutes, four seconds into flight, or about a minute, 20 seconds from now. Keep an eye on that left side of the screen. You'll see the grid fins steering the booster towards a short fall of Gravitas, if we have ground station coverage. Seven minutes into flight, second stage now 161 kilometers in altitude, traveling over 17,500 kilometers an hour. First stage now descending through 20 kilometers in altitude, still traveling over 4,000 kilometers an hour. But you can see bleeding off that speed now under 3,000 kilometers an hour. Under 2,000 kilometers an hour now descending through 10 kilometers above a shortfall of Gravitas over the Atlantic Ocean. 
H1 transonic. Stand by for that landing burn set to begin here. Eight minutes, four seconds into flight. First stage now completing its 14th mission. Now below six kilometers in altitude. Nominal trajectory. Stage one landing burn. Stage one landing leg deploy. And there you can see it on your screen. SpaceX's Falcon Stage 9 one landing confirmed. booster has touched down, having completed its 14th flight, carrying 22 more Starlink satellites to orbit. Terminal guidance. Waiting for that final call out of Seco 1. But as SpaceX is doing, they are now changing how they do their broadcasts, and that's going to do it for their live coverage. Make sure you follow along over on X for confirmation of deployment. Deployment set to occur one hour, five minutes, six seconds in today's flight. If you haven't yet, take a moment, head on over to the Launchpad store, use promo code LAUNCHDAY, that gets you 10% off of everything over on the TLP shop. Uh, global shipping is available, and consider joining us over on our TLP Discord, that's where our community hangs out in between launches. That's going to do it for us here today from our TLP Canada studio. Canada studio. My name's Zach, and we'll see you next time, because space is better together. Good night.